ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening, and I am going to be painting this bat. I don't know if it's a vampire bat or not, but I wanted to get into the uh, Halloween spirit and paint a bat. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, so please come along and paint with me. I'll tell you what I'm doing every step of the way as I'm doing it. <clears throat> the brushes that I'm using this evening are Rubloff brushes. These are from Russia. I bought them on eBay and they're really quite nice. The paper that I'm using is Arches Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper. And I'm just starting with a very light wash on the wing of this bat with some simple Payne's Gray and where I think there's a little more fleshy tone to it. I'm mixing in just a little burnt umber, but I want this to be a very light wash. I don't want uh, this to be dark at all. And when it dries, it's going to be the background color for everything, kind of the bones inside of the wings or arms on this bat. There he is. And I've left a couple of rough edges on here. There's one and there's one that, there. That's where the hair on the body of this bat is going to kind of go over top of the, uh, the wing. And here we are on the other leg. Just, whoop, that's a, got it on that branch there a little bit too much. Just pull it down. Uh, and this is the same thing on this side, a little Payne's Gray where it looks like maybe there's a little more skin tone on there. I again mix in just a little burnt umber like that around some hair yet to be painted and on through. And like I said, this is just the first layer that's going to go on this. The first of many. Uh, the brush I'm uh, the brush size that I've got here is a number six brush. It's a good size. It's not huge, but it holds quite a bit of water and paint. These are Kalinsky Sable brushes that I'm using this evening. And as usual, uh, the paint that I'm using is my M. Graham watercolor paint. I've got it on a palette just off to my right hand side. Uh, and I'm deciding, yep, right over there. That's where my paint is, right over there as I'm painting. I'm deciding what I want to paint on this guy's face. This is kind of a difficult thing because the gray of his snout and the hair that uh, grows on him kind of are the same. And I've left a little dot of white in there, if you can just see it. Um, when you look at the reference photo next, when I put it up there, take a look. You can see it looks like he's got his tongue hanging out. So I left that little, little white dot in there. All right, I'm waiting for this to dry. I've got a little run on the left leg there. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll just let it sit there. And I'm talking to myself, trying to figure out what it is I want to start with next. And what it is, is the stick or the perch for this guy. The little twig that he's hanging off of. There it is. Uh, a little bit of of Hansi yellow, maybe a little gamboge mixed with just a bit of olive green and to tone it down just a touch, a little bit more of that burnt umber in there. Underneath on the bottom part of this, right in there, there we go, right on time. Uh, it's a little bit of ultramarine blue, not too much. I just want to give this stick a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of roundness on there. And I'm actually pulling off some paint I'm putting on there on the top shadow line, but uh, pulled off a, a ribbon of paint in the center right there. It's just a dry brush and to pull it off, hopefully to give that stick a little bit of roundness to it. All right, I'm dropping down a brush size. There we go. Comparing how big they are and thinking about what I want to do. And I need to 
at this point, start detailing, it's dry enough, where the bones are in uh, this guy's wings. And so what I'm going to do, and you'll see this repeated through a lot of this, is I'm going to put down a bit of paint and then I'm going to blend it out. A nice graded wash over, over in some instances, a, a larger area, maybe uh, a couple of inches long in some areas, a smaller graded wash, maybe a quarter of an inch or, or less. And you can already see it looks like there's some bones inside that a uh, little bit on his on his leg there. There you go. You can start to see that. And I've got all of these pre-drawn on my paper. I'm certainly not doing this uh, all by myself. And, and I'm trying to keep this a little more brown, a little more pink in there uh, on that the inside wing on his leg. It kind of looks like there's a, a fleshy bit to it as I look on the reference photo. In fact, let me put that reference photo back up so you can see what it looks like that I'm working on. And there he is. He's coming in. Uh, this image is quite a bit longer than uh, my photo editing program wanted me to drop in. So I've got to do it this funny little way where it scrolls past you. But you can see what I'm doing. And I'm looking at that image just to see where I think the darks are and where I think the lights are. The lightest parts are going to be the bones in these wings and I'm dropping those in. That color that I just put in has a little bit of black to it. I should say the, the, the major colors that I'm going to be working with here are Payne's Gray, neutral tint on those wings, maybe a little bit of sepia, some black if I really want to go dark on those wings, and some burnt umber in those little bit of fleshy, more fleshy parts. The Payne's Gray got a little bit more of a blue tint to it, the neutral tint a little bit more of a purplish tint to it, and I think between the two of them it'll make a nice wing-ish color. And you can see if you look right there, those two colors, one on top, one on the bottom that I just painted, you can see a little bit of difference to them. One is a neutral tint, one is Payne's Gray. And I'm looking to see where, where the darks are, where the lights are. How can I, how can I blend this in? This one's getting blended on both sides. It's a very gentle, gentle dark that's underneath. Yes, 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 yes. I'm using Arches watercolor paper. I don't know why I pulled that out just now, but there it is. That's the paper that I am using. And I do turn this, I will be turning this a lot, uh, my paper. It's a lot easier to turn the paper and paint than it is to turn my hand and paint. So I apologize for that. I don't think it's too distracting, but if it's a bit distracting for you, I apologize for it. I'm not going to stop doing it because uh, it makes it so much easier to paint, but I'll try to limit the amount that I do or not do it so quickly that it's a huge distraction. I guess that's, that's the, the worst part to it. Uh, and you can see as I'm just dropping some color in here and doing a little bit of these uh, variegated washes that uh, quite quickly we can develop the areas that the, that the bones are in or, or the ridges in these wings are. And uh, you can quickly see how just doing a blended wash is, is uh, a very powerful tool for um, putting some details into your painting. There he is, and uh, since the wing on the left-hand side at this point is a little damp, well, I'm going to work on the wing on the right-hand side. And it looks as though I've dropped down a brush size or two. This is probably, well, it looks like a brush size four to me. Just so I can work in a slightly smaller place. And this brush comes to a very nice point. 
So if I have to get in a very tight area, uh, I can do that with this brush. And I don't know if, uh, truthfully, if the reference photo has all of these bones on it, but this is the way I've drawn it. Uh, I use that reference photo as a reference, but I'm not using it as a complete guide. So here he is coming in here. Oh, you can see there's a little brown there, a little brown, a little purple. Looks like that, that bit of color might have a little bit of sepia in it and be maybe made out of mostly neutral tint. All right, and I'm just trying to jump around a little bit to work on those areas that are that have dried a bit. Um, and to try to keep my hand really away from those bits that are still quite wet. I do have a, a terrible habit of sticking my palm or my fingers into wet paints on my paintings and getting paint everywhere. I'm going to try not to do that on this one. We'll see how it works out. It's never really worked out in the past, but uh, hopefully... On this one, it will work out quite well. I can tell I've got a little sepia in there. Yeah, yeah that's burnt umber on that side. On the, on the right-hand side over there, a little darker. Maybe a little sepia in there with that Payne's Gray. And we should have a shadow line right there underneath that stick on this bat's feet. So we'll put that and blend that out. A nice gentle uh, shadow line. And, and still working to try to put in some details. I'll probably would do something on the other side here. Yep, there we go. That's just going to help define that highlight. You put it on a dark, it helps define the highlight. There it is. Maybe I maybe I blended it out a little too much. I'm gonna have to I'm definitely gonna have to go back and do more with that because I've taken so much paint off. But I'd rather add two layers of paint uh, onto it to know I've got it right rather than do one and have it too thick and not have it look quite right. All right. I'm just I'm just I'm taking my time. Uh, and looking at my reference photo to make sure I'm just getting darks in the right area. I will say when I'm done with this guy, I think he comes out more cute than scary. <laughs> I've tried to get into the Halloween theme, but I don't think uh, that this guy, I don't think scary is in my bones to paint uh, something too, too scary. He comes out kind of soft and lovable, and that's okay. Uh, there's room for that, too. Where are the darks chasing the darks? It's, it's really kind of uh, disconcerting to look at this and see the painting upside down, and yet I feel like the light, well, the light is coming from the top, but I feel like I'm painting it upside down because he's hanging upside down, and it's a little weird to put um, shadows on what, in essence, or so the top part of his wing. It feels a little odd to do that, but I'm sure I'll get through it. I'm sure we'll end up with something that looks pretty nice. It's already getting there. In not too much time, you can see those wings are already looking pretty developed. We're going to come back and do quite a bit more with those. We've got some more shadows that we need to put on there. We'll make that look better. Uh, but it's looking pretty nice. It's looking like he's all wrapped up in his wings there, protecting himself from the elements or the sun. I don't know. If he's a vampire, he's totally protecting himself from the sun, I guess. Uh, but we're getting there. 
it's just going to from this point forward and and you can see also i guess this is this is the more exciting thing you can also see how the variations in color there really make the different parts of of his wings uh, come to life right had we used just Payne's gray or had we used just neutral tint um i i think the wings wouldn't have come out so cool but by using those different tints and hues of gray in there it really brings the, uh, the 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 wings to life and makes them look more more real and more interesting and more uh, more like there's there's more to them than than just one color which kind of mimics what it is in reality as the light hits the wings in different ways they really uh, develop different shades and hues in them so I want to I want to represent that and keep that going. And so uh, we're going to do that. And it won't be long. I'm going to take a break from his wings here. And I'm going to get into painting his body. But we've got a few wings. And look at that. Now it looks like uh, uh, there's some dark underneath the bone. And then it's kind of stretched out. And then it goes back into dark. Tucks in underneath kind of one, I guess it's one big finger area there. All right, let's paint some toes up here. How about this? These are really easy. This is a tiny little brush. This is a size number one that I'm using here. But it's really just a little arch with a little toenail that comes down below it. Really, there's not much to do on this. This guy's hanging on for dear life there. But we can put those on, and I'm going to put those on a little bit darker. I don't, I'm not worried if I have to come back and do these again. That's okay with me uh, to put them on in one shot. I'll bet you anybody who looks at this painting uh, initially, they're not even going to notice those toes that are hanging on up there. But um, well, we got them on there nonetheless. There they are. And they're going to look great when it's done. And now here, finally, 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 we're going to get into the body of this bat. Now his fur does have a lot of black or dark color in it. I don't want that much dark color. I want the dark to be in the wings. I want the I want the fur on him to stay pretty light. So your eye doesn't have to think about what is what. You're just going to look at it. Now this is a lot of a burnt umber. There's just a bit of maroon uh, perylene in this for me to redden it just a little bit and help keep it a little bit dark but this is mostly uh, a light wash of burnt umber and we're going to take this and go pretty much all the way on his body with it right up to his head well we're going to do his head too but I want to make sure I get all of this on here right underneath his chin somewhere in there his chin is all right i just put the uh, reference photo back up there so you can see what we're doing you can see how that hair is dark through there and you can see the difference in in how i'm doing it and how it is in real life. I'm okay with it. Now we do have a few more layers of paint to go on this guy, but I want to I want to do him justice. So we're gonna we're gonna darken up some of this fur. I guess it's fur more than hair. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really good with <laughs> with what grows on animals. I guess. Uh, but I want to leave his face uh, mostly gray. We're, we'll definitely come back and retouch that too. The wings, I think, are are dry. We can get back into those if we want to. And we're just going to keep building layer upon layer upon layer here. And, and going right along. Eventually. Come on, Michael. Let's start painting again. There we go. All right. Uh, uh, I don't want to fill in every place uh, that isn't the bones or fingers in in his wings or her wings. Uh, I I just I want to have some 
variations or some variegation in there. So I, I want to leave uh, quite a bit of lighter space in there, but I just want to I just want to go back and hit some of these darks and make sure that uh, what's going in uh, really does benefit. Here, uh, this is a tiny brush. I know this is a zero. This might even be a double zero. Uh, there's some lines on this guy's skin up there where they kind of bunch up where his skin bunches up at his legs. So I'm just using this to draw a line or two here and there. There we go. Uh, this will, that line there will just help differentiate between uh, that flap of skin on his leg behind the, the, the bit in the front. It just kind of tap and soften that, soften the one edge of that there. There we go. And just doing that, you can see it pushed that, that little flap um, to, the, to the right of his leg, pushed it way back. It uh, didn't take much, and it really separated the two of them. I've gone back to a little bigger brush, and I've got a little darker mix on here. And around the sides here, right, around his side, it's going to be a bit darker as it comes to his middle. It's going to get lighter, right? That represents the light not getting to the sides. Maybe the light is kind of just like this. Kind of there's kind of some shadow area on his on his fur or his hair. You know, it's got to be fur. I would imagine it's got to be fur. Somebody will tell me if it's fur or hair down in the comments. I hope. I don't want to get it wrong. I'm trying to leave a little bit of, uh, of a rough edge over there from the fur from his face, right? Just below his chin. And same thing on this side. Make it nice and dark right where his wing wraps around and, and lighter kind of everywhere else. And then there's a darker-ish line right below his chin. There it is. It doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch doesn't have to be perfect and then I hope I'm mixing some paint I'm gonna do this on the other side there we go I knew it was coming up somewhere and we're gonna and we've gone in in 30 seconds of time here a minute whatever it's been it hasn't been very long from a flat wash that had not a lot of interest on it. I mean, it was a nice color, but to one now that uh, really makes his body look like it's rounded quite a bit, right? Like, like it's got some life to it all of a sudden. And there he is. I'm gonna turn it a little bit and on the bottom side of his head is of course shadow up here. Yep, yep, yep. I'm just going to blend that up there a little bit. All right, all right, all right. Now we've got his snout and his face to work on, his eyes. I've got his ears. I kind of neglected doing anything with his ears. But we are going to come back and get that. And now that... His fur is on. Uh, his wing doesn't look quite right. So we're going to have to re-darken a couple of areas here. Uh, that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but the addition of some colors kind of makes other ones look a little washed out or whatnot. Luckily, we've got the power to put that right back on and make it look exactly like we want it to. There it is, and underneath here, maybe a little bit. Perfect. My only thing is, I wish I had used a bit more of the burnt umber in there, or maybe just maybe just a touch of alizarin crimson, something to leave that keep that a warmer, fleshy color in there. I think it got just a little, just a little too much gray in there for what I really wanted. 
But that's okay. Uh, in the end, I think this turned out fantastic. I really enjoyed uh, painting it. I really liked the way that it turned out, so I'm not disappointed by any stretch with that. Let's see, maybe I was wrong about the feet up here. I thought I'd be able to get away with doing it only in one go around, but the addition of a little touch extra paint there really puts a little shadow on those feet. Makes them look like uh, there's more to them there, like they're more realistic. Not super real. I don't paint anything super real, but more realistic. I'm just trying to think what's the best way to do this. What's the best way to do this? I guess, I, uh, I, I don't know what the best way is, uh, but I am going to finally paint some ears. There we go. Well, just mostly these are Payne's Gray and I really don't remember. I think I put just a touch of brown in them, but not much. I, I don't now, I think I'm just going to do some shadowing in the ears. All right, his eyes, pure black. This is M. Graham black. It's a really warm black color, and this is a tiny, tiny paintbrush that I have. I certainly don't think I am the best at painting eyes. There we go. I didn't want to get some of the white off around those eyes and kind of hope to make them about the same size. <laughs> I'll come back and touch those up uh, in a little bit. And then I know he's got a lot of gray on his face and I don't want to, I don't want to lose that in any of any of the brown skin tones. So I want to make sure that's on his face and I'm going to blend that all out on the sides. I mean totally out. Here we go, and I guess I'll go over his snout. I'm going to redefine that in just a minute. I didn't really, couldn't think of a good way to paint that snout. It didn't seem like a a good thing to do to me. I didn't, I didn't have a good plan on how to paint that snout. But I think what I what I end up doing. Well, I know what I end up doing, but I think I, I did it. What is the best way uh, possible on here? It's just to make the outline of the snout and then uh, blend it everything the snout on down and and leave it that way and and it seems to work pretty well all right I don't know that little area right there that's, I don't it's probably the sixth or seventh coat of paint that's been on there I don't know something like that but I'm just looking at my reference photo looking at uh, the darks uh, against the lights, trying to figure out where I need to go, what I need to do to enhance this painting, uh, even if it's just a little bit. Where can I, where can I add to it that'll add a little bit of interest? And you see, I've got a very small brush at this point. Uh, all my large brushes are put away. There's no reason to use it. Here we go. Here's Here's painting a snout. There's some nose holes, some nostrils, a nose hole. There's his nostril. There's just a little pink uh, bit on his tongue. I don't even know if it's going to show up. Going right back to some darks. Like I said, a little tiny, a little tiny brush here. Started with big brushes, worked my way down uh, the number of sizes, and I'm on to little brushes at this point in time. Here we go. Now I'm adding some darks into that ear to give that ear some dimension. That, that was quick. That was easy on how to do that. I wish I'd have got it more, a little bit more in frame. There you can see it, but there we go. Some quick dimension on here, and here's the snout, right? Let's just, there it is. 
We don't need to show much. We don't need to prove anything. Everybody knows what the snout is. Everybody knows what it should look like. It's a, it's just a little thing that comes off of his face there, right? So we've got it. And while I'm trying to fix my eyes, I'm glad I kind of made his fur a little rough and put some dots and whatnot in there. It really helps to uh, make it look more fur-ish than natural. Uh, these aren't really eyebrows that are on him. <laughs> I'm trying to accentuate his eyes, trying to make them look uh, a little bigger, make them stand, not necessarily bigger, make them stand out a little bit more, blending that paint out. Should do a little bit, yeah, I was going to do a little bit on the bottom side or the top side, depending upon well, the way he's hanging or sitting, just to make those eyes come out a little bit more not having to do too, too much. I'm just about done with this painting. I'm going to probably put some whites on there. Oh, there you can see his pink tongue. There it is. Uh, I'm going to probably put some white. There it is, my gel pen on his eyes. And that's going to be about it for this painting. If you do like this, please leave a comment down below and like the video. I would appreciate that very much. There are links down below to social media, my Discord channel. You can see the reference photo that I used there. You can get a copy of it. Oh, we've got to dry his eyeballs off. And uh, links to my website, Instagram, all the other social media that I use uh, there. Just trying to see what's wet and what's dry. Once again, thank you for joining me in the studio this evening. I had a great time painting this. I hope you enjoyed watching and listening to me. We'll see you back here next time in the studio. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.